So I wanted to add a little bit of a painterly feeling to this. Um, not exactly like it looks like it's truly painted, but just give it a feeling that's a little different than what we're getting here. I'll just zoom up and see what we have for now. And let's see what we can do to it. First off, I want to do it in a way where I could easily uh, make changes later. Uh, let's say I want to do different adjustments or a retouching to this and not be stuck with the painterly look. To do that, I'm going to first go to the filter menu and say convert for smart filters. And just so you know, anytime you ever choose that, it's just a shortcut for this menu command. It does the exact same thing as that. That's what you're really choosing. And they just found that not enough people knew that you could choose that before applying a filter to make it so the filter is not permanent. Instead, the filter is just an accessory to the layer where it's just sitting there, something you could throw away or turn on and off. And because not enough people were using it, I think they slid it over here with a slightly different name. But that's all it does, turns it into a smart object. So anyway, I'm going to choose that. In my layers panel, the only indication that I've done that is a little icon on top of the thumbnail for my image, this icon here. Whenever you see that, that means it's a smart object. And with a smart object, it's going to protect the original contents of this layer. So the filter that I apply will not be able to directly affect the image. Instead, it'll be just kind of attached to that layer. And let's see what we can end up doing. I'm going to go up to the filter menu, and we'll try going into the um, filter gallery. And in here, we have all sorts of uh, filters. I'm just going to use one right now, and it's called Rough Pastels. Looks kind of cool with whatever it defaulted to, glass. Looks funky, doesn't it? Like she's behind a big sheet of textured glass. But I don't want that look. I want rough pastels. You can see with rough pastels, you do get a kind of a diagonal paint stroke kind of feeling to it. And all we need to do is fine tune the settings that are here. And so let's look at what we might want to apply. So in my case, I'm going to uh, come in here, and I, I think rough pastels at 35 should be all right. I think the main thing I might end up uh, shifting around in here is just kind of fine tuning this, because I'm going to actually use more than one setting. Because I like the way this is looking in the background. Out here, it's looking very painterly. I don't mind the way it's looking where her hands are and things, but I think where her face is in another area is just way too much. So we're going to actually end up doing two different applications of this particular filter. And for the first application, I think settings around here is an all right starting point. What's nice is that if I end up, um, what was I going to say, uh, changing my mind. Since this is on a smart filter, I can always go back and I can modify the settings. It's not permanent. Uh, but actually, I think what's happening in here at the moment is if you look on the right side, the lower right, you can see a list of effects that are being applied. Do you remember the last time we used this filter? I think we were creating a texture. We had done something like the clouds filter, and then we came in here and we applied a, a series. And it looks to me like it's remembering the last two, which is making this more extreme than usual. If I turn off the eyeball for the other two, I think we're going to get a much mellower result. And it might be actually a little more applicable to this image. Let's take a look. Yeah. So that was actually underpainting. Let's just build them up. Underpainting, watercolor, and then rough pastels, which was getting rid of quite a bit of detail. And if I turn off these other two, that's just it remembering it from when we created a texture earlier. So let's just do rough pastels. That's much more mellow. All right, I'm going to click OK. And whenever you apply a filter, on a smart object, it ends up showing up here as a little line at the bottom. You could turn off the eyeball to hide it, uh, turn on the eyeball to show it again, or double click on its name to change its settings. But it also comes here with a mask. And let's use that mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Karen. I'll do that before the image has been distorted with the filter, because otherwise this yellow is being pushed into her skin area. So I'm just going to turn off the eyeball on the filter gallery that's been applied so we see what it looked like beforehand. I'm going to then go over and use my quick selection tool. And when I use quick selection, you'll get a better looking end result if you turn on a checkbox up here called Auto Enhance. If you've never used quick selection before by chance, this is what it looks like. It's a little brush with a little dotted circle behind it. And the way it works is you want to choose a brush that is the largest brush that will allow you to paint across the majority of what you want to select without getting overspray on the background. 
That means I want a brush no bigger than the width of her wrist, because otherwise when I paint across the area where her wrist is, I would end up getting overspray in the background. So I might need to end up switching to an even smaller brush to get where her fingers are as well. But let's try it out. I'll click here. I'll start to drag. And all I'm going to do is drag across wherever Karen shows up. Oops, I accidentally bumped into the background. I don't know if you noticed it, but I, I went a little bit too low. I'll fix that in a moment. You can let go and click again as many times as you want. Each time you click, it's going to just add to the selection you had previously. And uh, so this is one approach I can use to select Karen. But I find that oftentimes thinking about what you don't want selected can sometimes be simpler. Because if you look at Karen, she's wearing gray and black, and she has skin tone. She's got a lot of different colors, like at least three, maybe four. And let me show you a slightly different way of approaching this. I'll just choose Deselect. Instead, why don't I just select the background? Because with the background, I can use a pretty big brush, and I can just do this. Boom. Like that. Go over here, select. I just let go and clicked again to select this other area. And go up here and get the top and get in here. And then there's something where Photoshop can help me out because there's a lot of areas I don't currently have selected. Like look in between her fingers. Didn't get that. And look down here. See in this area, there's um, some yellow up here close to her body. I don't want to get a brush small enough to paint over that without getting overspray. So let's cheat. It's Photoshop. I love cheating. It saves time. So I have most of the background selected. All I'm going to do is go to the Select menu, and I'm going to tell Photoshop to select things that are similar. Now, there's two commands here that can be helpful. There's Grow, and there's Similar. The difference is Grow is going to expand my selection to make it bigger, and it's just going to make it bigger while it goes across colors similar to what you already have selected. So if I choose Grow, we get some of those areas near the bottom. The thing that Grow can't do is find an isolated area. For instance, let's say I did not have the area that is, I'll deselect it, in here. I didn't have that part. If I go over here and choose Grow, it's not able to go into this part. It's got to be one continuous selection that's unbroken. It can't leap over something to find more in here. Choose Undo. The command called Similar, though, looks across the entire picture, and it can create isolated areas where they're broken into multiple chunks. So I think Similar is going to be better here. There, it got into that area uh, right in here. Just so you know, both Grow and Similar use the tolerance setting of your Magic Wand tool. So if you find it doesn't select enough, you could increase the tolerance setting on your Magic Wand, and it would select a wider range of tones. And you could decrease it if it's not selecting enough. Okay. So anyway, I'm just, I just chose undo for a moment. I'm just going to make sure I got enough of this uh, stuff selected that's easy to select. Get all the easy stuff before I end up using grow or similar. There's an easy part down there. OK, I think I got all the easy stuff selected. Then I can choose either grow or similar, in my case similar. And that should get everything else. So now if you look. You see how it's nicely selected around these elements. All right, so I got that selection. Now I'm going to go into my Layers panel. Remember, we had a filter applied to the layer, and I just turned off the eyeball icon that was next to it. I'll turn that eyeball back on so you see the filter being applied once again. Again, And what I want to do is just make it so it doesn't affect Karen. So if I zoom up here, right now you see the filter encroaching into her arm like that. I want to prevent that from happening. Right now, we have all the yellow areas selected out here. I want the exact opposite of that. So I'll go to the Select menu and choose Inverse. That'll give me the opposite. So that means now I have this area in here selected. I'll work on the mask. So in my Layers panel, I just clicked on the mask. You can see the corners are highlighted to indicate that's what's being worked on. And on a mask, if you fill it with black anywhere, it removes whatever the mask is attached to. That mask is attached to our filters, so if I say Fill, and I tell it to fill with black, now the filter is not applying to Karen. Okay? Deselect. So now we have it just on the background, but I think that that makes it look like a photo plopped onto a painterly background, instead of looking like she belongs there. And so what I want to do is apply the filter again. I'm just going to apply it with a lower setting, 
and I'm going to use only that lower setting where Karen's body is. And that way it won't affect it quite as much. Now I could go to the filter menu and just apply the filter again. The problem with that is this mask will affect all filters attached to that layer. So if I end up applying two or three um, filters to it, that mask will affect them all. I need to have a different mask for it. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer. I'll just type Command J to jump it to a new layer. And then I'm going to come in here. And our mask is limiting where the filter can affect the image. Right now, if you look at the mask, black hides the effect. It's hiding it off of Karen. I'm going to choose a different setting for the filter that I want to apply just to Karen. So I'm going to invert this mask so we have the opposite of what's in it right now. To do that, I can either type Command I, Control I in Windows, or come over here and there's the manual choice of Invert. You just need to make sure the mask is active. So if you see the corners highlighted on the mask, that's what it should invert. And now do you see that our mask is working on the opposite. Now I'm just going to double click on the name of the filter so I can modify its settings and use lower settings in that particular area. So let's take a look. Now, let's get over here to where I can see a better portion of Karen, where the edge of her hair is, where her arms are, uh, that type of thing. And let's see what I might need to uh, do. Let's bring our stroke length down because that's what's causing it to encroach into her arm so far, where the yellowish from the surroundings is being pushed in there. So let's bring that stroke length down and down to get less and less of it. In fact, we can bring it all the way down. That's perfectly fine. The stroke detail, we might want a little bit less detail in it. And by doing those two changes, we're still getting texture where her face is, but it's nowhere near as aggressive as uh, what we had before. I could also take the relief, which is how kind of aggressive the texture is, how three-dimensional the texture is, and possibly bring that down a little bit. All right, I'm kind of liking that better for where her arm is. We still got the really painterly look out here. Once we get to her arm, it encroaches a little bit, but not all that aggressively.